Hey guys, Max Convexty here. Hope everyone's having a great evening. All right, just looking at some tracking error here. We'll look at that later. Let's talk about these uh, defiance funds and the options positions for tomorrow. All right, triple QI. Well, first of all, let's do this. I haven't even seen how they did today. I assume they did well. All right, well, yeah, of course, Russell's just been on fire lately. One of them was losing money. NASDAQ was losing money today. I, I hadn't even seen how it finished yet. Okay, NASDAQ finished right about at max profit. Badass. Yeah, I, I checked in at lunch, and NASDAQ was losing money. All right, and, of course, S&P just blew up. All right. Well, let's start with NASDAQ for tomorrow. So they moved the strike up 70 points, which is good. They sold they sold the 17920 strike 160 times for 135 bucks, and this is a two day option. This doesn't expire till Monday afternoon. Um, so that that leaves a lot of cushion on the downside, but of course it's for two days. So what they'll do is they'll cover this probably for around 35 bucks tomorrow. And then they'll roll out to a, then they'll sell a different one for, for also for Monday. They'll break this two-day option and they'll trade it like a one-day. All right, well, that's, uh, it'd be 2.1 million. But like I say, they'll, they'll try to get a million of it tomorrow and then a million of it the, the next day. They do this every month. Now, one of these guys didn't do it, though. So let's check. Is it IWMY? No, yeah, IWMY, that, that option right there, that's the wrong date. That is also an option for, um, for Monday. All right. So they did the 2075 strike on Russell 566 times. Man, this would be huge. 1.5 million if they get it. Like I say, it's for two days, though. 27 and a half, that makes the break even. 2,047 and a half. Million five. It would take these guys to 12 cents positive on the month. Yeah, that would be huge. That would be a huge comeback. Considering just a few days ago, they were down 50 cents. But then the day before that, they were up 19 cents. And this, this fund has been super volatile. Or Russell has been. It's uh, Every day, Russell's either up the most or down the most. All right, let's check in on JEPY. These guys sell SPX. So they sold the SPX 50-40 strike. Boy, they moved up. That's, that's impressive when you move up uh, 35 handles. You know, I mean, Allie, we're in a freaking runaway bull market right now. All right, but anyway, so they sold the 50 40, 258 times for 1834. That makes 5,021, 66, break even. So it comes to 473,000 or 37 basis points, and it would take them to five cents positive on the month. All right. Let's look at. Let's look at the tracking there. All right, let's start over here on in the S&P. All right, which one was up the most here? Uh, wow, nice. I spy, of course. I spy is up the most lots of days. It could also be that the, it's less liquid and it has a wide, it could also be there's a wide uh, spread on the bid and the ask. 
uh, Charles, a commenter, brought that up to me, and, and I looked a couple times. I tried to determine how wide is that. Let me know what you guys think here. It shows the bid at 41 and the ask at 62. I mean, <clears throat> anyway, it, you know, I've, uh, it, well, but then the price it's really trading at is 41.64. But then I thought, I wonder if that means like 41.61 or maybe 41.41 to 41.62. I don't know. I can't really tell. But yeah, I think their quotes are jacked up somehow. So. I to kind of take it with a grain of salt, but if you look at the chart, the general chart of these guys, uh, they've been a pretty well good performing fund. I think on any given day, the change could be off. So I'm not putting that much credence on, you know, because of a widespread on the bid and offer, but they do have a general <coughs> good, um, they're catching a lot of upside. Of course, we're in a runaway bull market, but they're catching a lot of upside, and they're paying a decent uh, dividend. They just declared the other day, and I forget what it came to, but it was decent. These guys are good. These guys are good. And they're doing, I think they're doing daily covered calls, too. Yeah, they are. Which I didn't understand why they don't just write puts. But, but anyway, they're doing well. All right. So let's see what else we got. Let's do this. Let's check out the rest of the tracking there. All right. So in the NASDAQ, we have QQQI, the big winner. That's awesome. Uh, the Goldman Sachs Fund, GPIQ, second. Check out. Check this out too. A bunch of people are buying JEPY. There's money coming into it. There's nine, the fund grew by nine million overnight. I mean, there was a three hundred and forty thousand winner. <clears throat> so you'd expect it to grow by three forty because they're making money, or even by seven twenty because of the money they made the day before. I would expect that, but. It grew by $9 million and the and the shares grew also. So anyway, that's good news. This fund is growing. That is good news. The more, the merrier. The more, the merrier. The last time I checked the size of the Goldman Fund and the BlackRock Fund, and there are good funds, Bally and GPIQ, and, or they, they look like they're going to be good. I, I don't know. I do like the Bally. I'm not sure about the Goldman, but they look like they're decent, but they're tiny. Like twenty billion under management. I mean, I guess it's because it, you know, people are chasing yield or whatever. But I think even if you aren't chasing yield and you reinvest, and you're reinvesting half of the, you know, half of these divvies you're getting or, or whatever, even or, you know, even if you or even if you're chasing yield and you kind of know you are, but you're doing it on purpose just to just to get some money, kind of taking a gamble. That's fine, but I really. Um, I think these are good funds, you know, I think these are good funds anyway. I mean, they're fine if you're reinvesting, but but anyway, they're all good. Especially everything's going to look good while the market's up every day. While the market's making all-time highs, they're all going to look good. So that's, that's probably part of it, too. A lot of this is recency bias because the past couple of months, with a few days, there's been one or two bad days in there. But they have been pretty much straight up since November. We're just on this set. This market's on fire. Let's take a look at that. Let's look at uh, let's look at Russell, and let's look at some weeklies here. Yeah, we bought them. You know, last week of October, and then it's been a whole new world since then. Look, Russell went from under the bottom Bollinger Man to over the top Bollinger Man on uh, on weeklies. Look at this. This is just a face ripper. S&P, same thing, went from under the Bollinger Man on the weeklies to above 
the top Bollinger Band in like four weeks and then breaks out from there is now just in total frickin' breakout mode. NASDAQ looks the same. All right, well, let's check these individual stocks. Or did we check this yet? Uh, I mean, they, they, IWM was the big winner. Well, I take that back. Uh, Pappy's the big winner. IWM was second place, and RYLD's, you know, bringing up the rear. All right, in the bond funds, so bonds had a big update. They were up half a percent. Look at old TLTW outperforming on the upside. Great job. S fall, of course, short, short volatility had a great day, so the the short volatility benchmark was up nearly a nearly a you know a percent, you know, and uh, S fall caught forty percent of it. Good job. All right, now let's look at the single stock. Let's see. All right, so single stocks. All right, Tesla. Yeah, caught about nice buffer there, but I mean, both the benchmark and Tesla had a great day. That's an awesome, awesome day there, Tesla. Nvidia outperformed. Coney, uh, Coney had a great day. OR had a fine day. See what happened with the AMZ. They performed in line. Aptly, aptly underperformed a little bit. AMD had a big day. Outperformed AMD. Nice job, AMD. TSLP had a great day. Both TSLP and TSLI had great days. TSLP outperformed TSLY by three hundredths of a point. 464 versus 461%. Uh, MRNY had a great day. Got almost all the upside of the parent. Uh, what else do we got here? PP had a good day. PP had a great day, got more upside than the parent. FBY did fine. Everything does fine when the market's up. DISO got about half the upside of Disney. Infly got almost no upside today, unfortunately. But they've been up most every other day. They're they're a good one. They were up like 10% last week or something. Sky got two-thirds of the, or more than two-thirds. Sky got about 90% of the upside of Square. That's a good job, Sky. GUI performed in line. XOMO was in line, had a good day, nearly up 2%. Goop, Goop and GUI, uh, well, actually, I take that back. Goop and GUI both outperformed. I was looking at that wrong because those were losses. All right, nice job, Goop and GUI. Everyone had a good everyone had a good day today. And MSFY outperformed a little bit. Now let's look at the 30-day chart. The 30-day charts changed a little bit. It, well it changes every day. Now let, let's make sure this is right. Okay, Tesla down 10.53. So on the 30-day, Tesla's I need to make sure we're yeah, 10.53 versus the benchmark is down seven. I just wish Tesla wasn't outperforming, uh, or Tesla wasn't outperforming on the downside. It's not supposed to work that way. That's not the way it is supposed to work. All right, but most of them, look, NVIDIA's doing fine. Get about half the upside. Coney's doing great. OARC's outperforming, the parent, you know, over the past 30 days. AMZ's in line. Apple's flat. This one's flat. Uh, TSLP, I mean, 
TSLP, same thing. It's behind the parent, just like TSOI. All right. MR, NY is in line. Those are in line. Uh, well, you'd expect these to all outperform a little bit because cover call funds never perform. And so when I say in line, it means the parent, you know, they're up, they have half the upside of the parent or something. I just try to pick the standout ones. GUI just hasn't been having a great time. The parent's flat and they're down. All the other ones are pretty much in line. DISO looks really good. NVIDIA looks really good. Coney looks really good. They all It's the same story as always. They all look good except this damn uh, TSLP and TSOI. I don't know what's going on with MRNY. We'll keep an eye on those. All right, guys. Uh, let's check futures real quick, and then I'll let you guys get out of here. All right, I still have it on weeks. So I need to go back to 30 minutes. I stay zoomed in, and I forget to go out to weeks or even months or at least days. I stay zoomed in on 30 minutes and 5 minutes all day, and sometimes I lose perspective of how, you know, how far this market's come, how, and, you know, the SPY and the, or the, the S&P and the NASDAQ are just absolutely on fire. All right, so futures, uh, NASDAQ futures are up 1600s. ES futures are pretty much flat. Russell futures down a, down a little bit. There's Bitcoin that's kind of cold off. Coinbase. Oh, yeah, Coinbase had earnings after hours today. The last I checked, uh, let's check. Last I checked, yeah, they're up 22 points after hours. That's only 13%, but that's a pretty good little amount. Should be a nice bump in the morning if it holds. All right, guys, have a great evening. I'll talk to you in the morning.